impeachment proceedings. We need many more communities to have that critical discussion at the local level and to pass this kind of resolution before their city council, before their town meeting, their county government, even their state legislature. That's one thing people can concretely do at the local level. Another thing is to write a letter to the editor of your local paper to say you think Congress should start impeachment proceedings. A third thing would be obviously to reach out to your members of Congress, call them and repeatedly call them and ask them where they stand on this question and why they're not, if they're not yet leading on impeachment. There are a dozen members of Congress who are sponsors of articles of impeachment right now, but we need many more. There's 68 that have gone on record for articles of impeachment, but they were forced, many of them, all of them rather, to vote by Congressman Al Green of Houston in two different votes for 2017, January 2018, and that's when they went on record. But by and large, we don't have enough leadership coming from Congress, and we the people need to demand that. We need to demand that our elected officials in Congress obey the oath of office that they took, uh, as well as the one the president took, which is to defend and protect, preserve the Constitution. This Constitution is under attack by this president. The final thing I would say, uh, of course, is that we urge people to buy this book at impeachmentproject.org, which is the site we've created to help educate people further about the work we're doing at Free Speech Free People on this front, but also about this book, because it provides a map, really, uh, for Congress, but for uh, people all across the country to make the arguments as to why impeachment proceedings should begin now. There's too much among the political elites and the media arguing that we need to wait for Robert Mueller, special counsel Robert Mueller, to complete his criminal investigation before we even talk about the impeachment question. And that is just a fiction. It's wrong uh, because Robert Mueller is focused on a question of whether or not the president and his associates committed offenses of federal criminal law, either in the 2016 election or other matters that he's discovered since then with respect to the Russian interference in the 2016 election. That's a separate question, entirely separate question from the question of impeachment, which again is about crimes against the state, abuse of power, abuse of the public trust. So we do not need to wait on Robert Mueller to complete his criminal investigation in order to start the demand now for impeachment proceedings against this president. And we'll be sure to put links up on our website uh, for ways to purchase this book. And also you lay out ways to write letters to the editor and things like that. And so we can post this on our website as well. My last question for you is, as an attorney, as someone who studies constitutional law and and voting law, did you ever think we were going to be looking at impeachment where some of the evidence was going to be in tweet form? (laughs) Well, you know, unfortunately, when it became clear that this president was not willing to follow the mandate of the Constitution before he took the oath of office, uh, it became clear to us that we were already going to be looking at impeachment. And that's why we prepared our campaign and launched it the day he took that oath. And it's gotten, of course, progressively worse uh, ever since. And, and, you know, his, his tweets include efforts to obstruct justice. They include recklessly threatening nuclear war, which is one of the uh, eight grounds that we cite. They include undermining the freedom of the press. He attacks the media as fake news. He suggests that reporters should be harmed physically, if not fired, put in jail. Uh, So yes, he uses his Twitter account in ways that already uh, give rise to abuse of power. But it's, it's, of course, not only his, his statements via Twitter, it's his actions uh, that he's taken over the course of the past year and a half, uh, which has demonstrated that he has no regard whatsoever for the rule of law and for the Constitution, and that's why he must be held accountable through the impeachment process. I know you had said that Robert Mueller's investigation is a completely sort of separate issue, but do you think that if Robert Mueller were to come back with evidence of a criminal criminal violation that that would help the case for impeachment or would there be no effect? I think it would help, no question about it, but I think our point is that the process of impeachment starts with an impeachment investigation and there's far more than sufficient evidence 
to justify that impeachment mm-hmm. investigation starting now. So our contention is that we, we should not be waiting for Robert Mueller to complete his criminal investigation before we start the impeachment process. But yes, he may uncover further evidence that demonstrates why articles of impeachment are justified. But at a start, we, 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 should, we should begin the impeachment investigation process now. John, is there anything else that you wanted to say? Well, I, you know, I guess I, I just want to say here that I think we are already in a constitutional crisis. You know, we, we hear sometimes, again, regarding the Mueller investigation, that, well, if he fires Robert Mueller, then we'll be in a constitutional crisis. Or if he fires Rod Rosenstein, the deputy attorney general overseeing the Mueller investigation, then we'll be in a constitutional crisis. Or if he pardons those under investigation by Robert Mueller, or even pardons himself, then we'll be in a constitutional crisis. And the problem with that, uh, that, that focus is that it misses what's already happening. We are already facing a constitutional crisis with a president who refuses to divest from his business interests, taking illegal payments from foreign governments all over the world, uh, illegally benefiting with his businesses in the United States when the Domestic Emoluments Clause makes clear he can't receive any benefits whatsoever other than his federal salary, the obstruction of justice that he's repeatedly engaged uh, in doing, the abuse of the pardon power that he already has participated in doing by pardoning former Sheriff Joe Arpaio, the Maricopa County, Arizona sheriff who was found in criminal contempt for violating the constitutional rights of thousands of people based on the color of their skin. These are all, uh, you know, among the eight legal grounds that we cite, and they all demonstrate that we're facing that constitutional crisis here and now. And as John Nichols, the nation's magazine's national affairs correspondent, writes in the foreword to this book, impeachment is not a constitutional crisis. Impeachment is the cure for a constitutional crisis, and that's the crisis we face today. So we should not be waiting for, you know, the next outrageous action or impeachable offense to this president before saying now we're going to act. We must act now to preserve the republic and our constitution. And it really is up to people all across the country of all political persuasions to come together to defend our democracy. Well, I am certainly persuaded by this book more so than I was before I read it. So I urge everyone to pick up a copy. Uh, So thank you to John Bonifaz, co-author of The Constitution Demands It, the case for the impeachment of Donald Trump. So thanks, John. And we're so glad we got a chance to speak with you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to Two Broads Talking Politics. Our theme song is called Are You Listening? off the album Elephant Shaped Trees by the band Imunari, and we're using it with express permission of the band. Our logo and all original artwork is by Matthew Wefflin and is done expressly for Two Broads Talking Politics. We can be found on our website at twobroadstalkingpolitics.com. You can reach us by email at twobroadstalkingpolitics at gmail.com, on Twitter at Two Broads Talk, on Facebook and Instagram, and you can support us on patreon.com. You can find our podcast on Apple Podcast, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, and anywhere podcasts are found. If you are interested in advertising on Two Broads Talking Politics, please email us at twobroadstalkingpolitics at gmail.com.